anywhere else, I think, because uh, I've just created it on the fly. But it has to be a highly technical definition, which is that the periods do not overlap, where the period during which the content is created and the period during which the content is being reviewed for the first time by the students. So this should be the first content review by students. There is no overlap. And obviously, synchronous is different. Synchronous is what we have been doing in class so far in your legal aspects of business. Uh, that is when the time when I'm creating the content, that is the class content period when I was giving you the lectures in class, uh, I was creating the content then there and then you guys were also experiencing it for the first time and the periods were overlapping. Okay, so that is the point of uh, that is the basic difference. Otherwise, there's no you, uh, you know, technical difference unless you put it this way. There is overlap. Okay. So class content creation period and first content review by students is overlap. Okay. So we got these two things out of the way. So what I will be doing is a lot of the stuff that I do in the class, um, which I will be taking notes here. This session notes you will find as part of your um, this will be in your Student notes, okay, under student notes, you will find uh, session notes, all right. So this session notes is meant to be a kind of a tracker. There is not going to be that much, like sometimes <clears throat> you may have this kind of a technical definition in there, but generally it's meant to keep track. This is like our class blackboard. So uh, instead of doing it, I'm just doing it on this so you guys don't have to take notes. This file is already shared with you with view rights. So whatever I write here, I will be pasting some. If I refer to a hyperlink uh, to a URL, I'll just paste it in here. So it will not look very pretty, but it is meant to be just a record of everything that we discuss in the class, and that saves you the time of having to copy the URL. Okay, so this is our session notes. The other thing that we will use from a session perspective is this. Okay, yeah. So uh, the other thing that we will use is this one, which is you see there's in the master list. I've also created uh, to save, you know, to not have too many files. I've also got a session one. I don't know if you can see the small s1 at the bottom here. So that if we do any calculation uh, at the end of the course, there will be session one, two, three, four, all the way to 20. Uh, this was meant to, uh, <clears throat> this is meant to be the uh, record if I have to do any calculations, okay, any, calc any spreadsheet work that I do. That is also like a uh, session blotter. This is a session tracker. So everything in this session will be in the spreadsheet and then you can access it. So you don't have to make those notes also uh, by yourself. Okay. All right. So that's our first one. Okay. Now let's take care of this. Uh, so the, uh, the first agenda item that I had was, uh, anytime you guys have any questions, you have to just, uh, I won't be able to see your hand because I'm looking at other stuff. So you can, you've seen that you, you guys are familiar with the hand thing, a hand option, right? Raise your hand. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. My net network is causing poor call quality. Okay, we'll try. So, okay, right. So uh, you just have to just shout it out if you have because I'm not looking at that option all the time. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, on the on the TWS. Uh, the first thing I want to clarify is so two people with no uh, information on logins, uh, Jakar and Priya Agarwal, were supposed to come back to me. You can do that after the class. Okay. All right, so um, that was my T on the TWS. Now let me just show you what else you guys have to do on the TWS. Uh, you will, uh, you obviously created the ID. Okay, now go to this page. Okay, I'm going to just put this in here. I'm just going to copy this, and uh, this is we are just setting up for our project. Okay, so this is one topic. Let me just put a double star for the day selection, and this is our first topic actually, which we discussed. Um, then this is a second topic, so I'm going to put a. The second topic is our TWS. Okay, so under TWS, I'm actually copying this. All right, so you click this hyperlink that takes you here. When you go here, what you do is maybe I should just do this to zoom a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. So when you load this page, it comes here. You go to trading, uh, where we are already in software. Where is my software option? I must have clicked on something else. Okay, let's go to trading. Let's go to platforms. Okay, so I'm going to trading and platforms. And uh, 
trading and platforms. Okay, so these are the various platform options. We are interested in the desktop TWS. Okay, so let's click on this desktop TWS that brings you here. Then here you click on download software. Under desktop TWS, you click on download software and it will uh, give you the download options. Why is it not giving this? Because I have been I have downloaded mine much 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 earlier. Uh, Mosaic. It's just giving you the instructions on the the details of the software. Classic TWS is the is the feature that I want to go to. Where is the download option? Okay, there we are. Okay, so you'll get this download option. Click on a version of TWS. You can see what it uh, which one you want. Okay, I would recommend going for the TWS latest version. Okay, go and download this. Once you download this, you should end up with a um, icon on your desktop. Download and install the software. That will give you an icon on your desktop like this one. Okay, uh, this icon. So this is basically what you launch. And when you launch this, we'll see what happens. Has anybody uh, down? Has anyone done this? Has anyone downloaded the software? Just started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. So somebody had uh, uh, somebody was able to log in. I have tested some of your logins, uh, but I've not been able to test all of them. We would have to test, make sure that we have uh, there's no error in the password and all that. Uh, so um, let's see what happens. I'm going to. So once you click that, what happens is you get a you get a thing like this. Okay, let me just once again uh, bring this here. Yeah, this is what you get, okay? Uh, and when you get this, let me just try and get in through. So you enter your username and password. I'll just... So once you enter the username and password, it will start logging you in and that takes a little bit of time because it's very heavy software. So um, that will log in and then you'll come to the interface which I'll show you what you have to do. Okay, so this is what we have to do set up uh, in terms of our software. Uh, we have to set it up and uh, be ready for the project and then I'll discuss the project a little bit. These are, these are the technical aspects of the software, let it load. In the meantime, I'll go on to the project part. So what you'll be doing in the project is also, let me just set this as here. So later on, I'll be sharing the project brief, etc., with you, the details, but I'm just going to give you um, uh, here what you have to do. So you will be managing a U.S. equity fund. Okay, with the money that you have in the in the TWS account, that will be about a million. They'll give you a million dollars starting balance, right? So uh, you'll be starting this. You'll be managing. This is your uh, live trading project, which is going to have thirty percent of the weightage, uh, thirty percent weightage for the course. But I would recommend that uh, you forget about the weightage. You just. Um, I think this I can now. Um, just sort of constantly loading. Okay. Never mind. So I will suggest that you don't worry about the weightage. Uh, I think it's very important. We have already mentioned this many times that uh, you don't. You need to get out of that grading and exams and degree, get acquiring a degree at minimum effort with minimum effort level. Get out of that kind of mindset and start thinking about learning and acquiring a skill set which industry will value, because that's what really matters in the corporate world. No one really cares whether you've got a C plus or you've got a B minus. These are not big uh, issues there. And if people care about your confidence level, which covers, uh, comes from your how much hard work you've done and what you can actually do, right? So you'll be managing this. Uh, so folk, try to get, so the point I was making is that just because it's 30% learning, 30% uh, weightage, don't just put in 30% effort. There's a lot you can learn. This is where the real learning comes from, okay? When you do these kind of projects, the harder you work, uh, the more learning you can get out of it. Okay, the reason this time, this time, this is the first batch in which we are doing the projects um, uh, as, uh, okay. Market data connection lost.
Yeah, this is because my bandwidth seems to be low. Uh, just wondering if I can switch to a different uh, internet provider. Market data, data connection re-established. Okay, so you'll see this. Now let me bring this here if I can. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, all right, here. Can you see this? When you log in, you'll get this kind of a message, okay? This is not a brokerage account. This is not a paper trading. Can you see that message? I understand and accept. Okay. Yes, sir. I logged okay. in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have uh, you understand and accept, and you 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 just say I understand and accept. Okay. So you will get this kind of a. Uh, um, you will get this. Uh, you will also get this. You will also get this. You'll get a daily lineup. This is just a new sheet, okay? Usually I launch, I close it, but you can explore it. I close it once it launches, okay? Then you will get this, which is your main uh, trading window, all right? Now, usually what happens is when it loads, in your case, your network is causing poor call quality, okay? Uh, okay, let me see if I switch to my, my, I'm on my Airtel right now. I'll try to switch to my Geo and see what happens. Both are, I mean, all of the Indian telcos are useless, actually. But uh, anyway, we have no choice. We are captives. You know, they have got us captured and we have to accept whatever garbage they give us. We have to accept. Okay, so let me try to, again, that will interrupt my session if I switch. Okay, let me see. Let me try that. Okay, I may just go out for a while and then come back in. I don't know when. Market data connection lost. Trading connection lost. Okay, am I back in? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, good, good. So I have switched out. Trading, trading connection yes, re re-established. Okay, I've switched out from my... Uh, Market data device. connection re-established. Okay. All right. Okay, so you're looking at my screen now. So usually what will happen is uh, when you log in, uh, you will be into this... Uh, you will Market data connection re-established. Okay, fine. Let's keep... Uh, this this is, sound is a little irritating, but anyway... So you will usually come into this mosaic thing here. At the bottom, you'll see there's a mosaic uh, thing here. Let me just put this here. So you can see I'm just making it, uh, just uh, resizing it here. So you'll see this mosaic thing here. This is where I am right now. This is what the mosaic looks like. I would generally, rec you can use whatever method you're comfortable with, but I will just show you the classic TWS, which I think is very clean. And it's the best way to, so I clicked on the classic tab, and then I'm just going to maximize my window once again, okay? So I'm going to be sending you shortly a, a, a ticker of, uh, you know, um, a ticker of uh, stock, uh, I mean, uh, common stocks. And what you're going to be doing in your project, essentially, I'm just giving you a quick pro project brief, okay, is you're going to be managing a U.S. equity, uh, long short U.S. equity fund. We'll call it long short, which means long short means this is how we, this is the lingo that we use in industry. Long short means that you can go long and you can go short. We'll explain all these terms, what long short means. So you will be doing this. So what you'll have to do is say Facebook is already one of the IDs. So this is how you're going to set it up when I send you the IDs. I'll send you the tickers, okay? So here, if you just um, do insert, it's my insert, okay. Um, Okay, if I just do insert rule, now suppose I've given you one of the tickers I've given you, let's say, is Amazon, okay? So the ticker for Amazon is AMZN. So you just type in AMZN, just click on one of the rows and uh, create an insert row, and or you go into a blank row. Uh, you click and uh, you type in Amazon and press enter. When you press enter, you will get uh, all these options, okay? So you have to click on stock smart, this one, okay? Smart is a type of routing uh, algorithm. 
it selects the best uh, execution destination uh, which is whether to go to NSE or whether to go to BSE that kind of logic so stock smart is what we want to enter okay don't enter all this other stuff don't get confused by that click on stock smart when you do that you get this obviously you can see here these are all grayed out because right now US markets are closed right so you can see this is crude oil. This is actually NYMEX uh, crude oil, this is North American crude oil. This is live because this market is still open on an electronic platform. So this you can see the data is live and it's trading with a pretty tight spread. So North American crude right now is uh, 30, 41, 36, 37. So, uh, this, so, so what you'll have to do is you'll do this. Now if you take any empty row as well, if, suppose I've given you Procter & Gamble as one of the other tickers. Procter & Gamble, the ticker is PG. You click it, once again, you can see PG, you get all kinds of other options, don't do all those things. Go to Stock Smart and enter that, okay? So what I'll be doing is I'll, send you a, I'll be spending you a, sending you a spreadsheet which will have a bunch of tickers, maybe about 30 tickers or 50 tickers. Uh, so these are called tickers, okay? So we say the ticker for Ace, uh, Facebook is FB. The ticker for, actually ticker is short for ticker symbol. Okay, this is new learning, so let me write that down for you guys here. Anything new that you're learning, you have to be because um, you guys are finance students, you're going to be going out into the industry talking, uh, you know, introducing yourself as finance students. So uh, people will expect that you know uh, all the jargon of finance. So I want to make sure that whenever I'm using anything which is a technical term, you understand it clearly. So this is a tick new term that we have learned, ticker symbol or ticker in case you didn't know it. So ticker symbol or ticker, so this is what you have, right? So these are your various ticker symbols. So ticker for Facebook is FB, ticker for Amazon is AMZN, PG, uh, PG is uh, Procter & Gamble. So you're going to be entering the tickers into the rows, okay, when I send you the list of tickers. Right now you don't know which ones you'll actually be using. But I'll give you a list of about 30 or 50 uh, stocks. And then what you'll have to do is you'll have to go through each of those stocks. And uh, so you'll have to enter these. The reason I'm giving you this heads up right now is that this is a very important source of learning for you guys. You will have to now take decisions on, uh, on this long shot equity fund that what should I do? What should I, should I sell Facebook? Should I buy Procter & Gamble? Should I, what should I, yeah, yes. Sir, Utsav here. Yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can recognize your voice. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Sir, uh, you will be giving us uh, the stocks. Um, the, we will be having a list of stocks in which we can trade or we can analyze on our own as well. No, no, no. I will be locking you into a universe of stocks. Okay. So, I will be oh. selecting certain stocks which are based on, the selection is going to be based on uh, certain volumes uh, and uh, you know, volume criteria and uh, market capitalization criteria that I will use, okay? And uh, I will be using that and then I will be uh, giving you a set symbol, which means that everybody is going to be looking at the same set of stocks, okay? But where you can have differences is that, the so that means there's a universe, let's say 30 stocks, okay? That means nobody can trade outside that universe. If you do any trade long short, it has to be inside that universe. It can only be for the stocks in that universe, all right? But uh, what you can, where you have differences is that, say, Utsav might decide to buy Amazon, then uh, uh, Priya might decide to sell uh, Amazon, Siddharth might decide no, nothing to do with Amazon, he wants to sell CNG. So these, this is where you have your uh, uniqueness and your differences in your portfolio, right? So the decisions you take, I give you a universe, and then from there you don't have to have positions in each of the stocks you will from that selection you will now what you're going to do is i'll just give you a brief example the reason i'm giving you this heads up right now because i will send out the universe very quickly tonight uh, or tomorrow i want you to start tracking the universe of stocks that's why i won't give you a very long, big universe i want you to start getting into this framework because this is what you're going to be doing in the real world if you get into this kind of business that or even in other areas of business the same skill set is going to be required so let's say you have Facebook as one of your stocks. What you're going to, I'm going to repeat this logic for every ticker that you have in the universe, okay? So what, what happens if you have Facebook as one of your stocks? Let's see, what do I have to do? I have to go to, um, 
this okay now you guys can set up this uh, trading view you can set up a free account it's a little irritating they'll keep bothering you with ads and all that but just deal with it it's, it's actually a pretty good uh, charting software okay um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to this because I'm using this ticker I'm just pasting it in here so that you I mean this uh, URL so you can just launch it from here set up an account for yourself it's a free account and then it's a very useful chart uh, charting system charting application okay so I have to do Facebook now what I will do is just click in the body of the chart uh, get out of the uh, bars and so FB okay I have to know the ticker even if you don't know the ticker just give the name of the company and that that will be fine okay Facebook and I click enter everybody followed what I did yeah if you have any if any stage if you have any problems okay I, I won't keep asking all the time but if I'm taking any steps, so the idea between or uh, behind all that I'm showing you is that you should be able to follow what I'm doing. So at any point of time, if you have any questions, like what's up, just ask the question. Anytime you have any question, please interrupt and ask the question. Okay, we are not bound by any kind of formal rules uh, because you have to be able to follow what I'm going to assume that you're following what I just did. Okay, so I just entered Facebook. If I want to now change to Amazon, I can go to Amazon. I just type AMZN and then I just press enter okay and this comes in okay and these are different uh, initially I can go for all okay you can see how dramatic the growth is right so I go for all here I can uh, show I, I hope you can see the all bottom at the bottom can, uh, can everyone see the bottom menu here there's all the way from one day to all yes sir yeah okay good good then I don't have to uh, resize it and bring it up okay all right, so you can see this. Now, what do I have to do? I have to go to Amazon and uh, assuming that Amazon is one of your tickers and I have to repeat this exercise for every item on my in my universe. If I have a universe of 30 stocks, I have to repeat this logic for every one of them. Okay, now to look at the chart, you start with all, then you come down five years, see what happens over five years. It looks like an uptrend. And so basically, you have to take your first decision as to whether you should buy or sell right so which we'll come to these decision problems from formally when we discuss the project but I'm just giving you a heads up you have to start now already forming a view at least start forming the view because this is what life and finance is always about okay for everything you do if you go into a corporate treasury setting you will have to take a view on markets maybe not US equities maybe interest rates maybe currencies but you will always have to form a view on market. So therefore, I would say for anybody interested in finance, uh, in serious interest in finance, it is absolutely vital that you start looking at charts, okay? Various types of charts. It could be Amazon. It could be if you're interested in the euro. You just write euro USD and enter it, and you see what's going on in the euro, okay? Then we come back. We go back to Amazon. You have to get into this habit of looking at charts, start following some major markets, and you will start out in this project by following these major U.S. equity uh, equity tickers, right? So we start, let's say, with the example of Amazon. So I looked at the long-term chart, and now I have to form a view. <clears throat> that means I have to decide whether I'm going to be a buyer or seller on this particular on this particular stock. Okay. So I look at this; looks like an uptrend. Uh, then I come back to the five-year view. Okay, still looks good. Then what I do, <coughs> I come in a little more, one year, I see this here, and uh, so I have to take a view here. So what I would do, obviously for my, given we'll discuss all these philosophies, but in my case, I'm very much bullish on this stock. I think it'll go even higher. So the only decision, that therefore, uh, I will be a buyer, obviously, right? If I think the stock is going even higher, then I'm going to be buying it, not selling it, okay? so. Now the only question is that we'll come to the other decision problems as to where is going to where is my stop loss. Okay, we'll discuss we'll define all these terms, but right now I'm giving you a brief rundown. So what I will decide is that okay. At uh, now I start getting into the uh, short term charts. Okay, you can do a four hour chart here. This is a very good. This is why I like this software. It's very good. It's free and it's got very good charts. Okay, so now I just did 240 and I went to a 4 hour chart. 240 is 60 into 4 is 4 hours, 240. So I can see a much uh, much more detail, all right? So even this is not good enough for me because it's too, uh, so now I do a 15 minute chart. 
because my view is actually now this could be wrong you can see where it is okay this is the last part of the movement that we're looking at the last big rally so my view is quite bullish actually so i would be willing to make a bet like this that it doesn't even go through i'm going to be watching this but my view is that it may not even go below this this low okay good i'm going to watch it the slightest sign of uh, strength that i see in the market right now is just declining for a while okay if you see from the five minute chart it's being declining from uh, 13 july onwards okay but i'm going to be following this decline all right as soon as this short term decline seems to have ended okay it is likely that the market will start to rise okay if you see here if you look at the trend of the chart you will see this in any chart you'll see there is a rally there's then there's in an uptrend okay there's a rally there's a decline and again it starts going up goes up comes down starts going up comes down, starts sir, going up. yeah yes go ahead uh, sir can you show the previous graph of uh, 15 minutes i have a doubt in that yeah yeah sir uh one second yeah sir from uh, 13 to 22 uh, it was uh, showing like a line not showing uptrend or downtrend basically not going so much up and down so sir in this situation what we do no no i i didn't understand what you said from from third you're talking about this period right you're talking about yeah. uh, yes sir yeah roughly what what did you say about this period i didn't follow that uh, sir, uh, there is a downtrend like it was going down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from 13 and then it was uh, like flat. Yeah, so it is kind up of down, up down. Yeah, so it is flat in the sense. Yeah, so there is no, uh, there is no clear. Yes, trend I, at this point, but from here it's going down. Yeah. So what is your question? What to do at this point? Yeah, sir. What 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 we have to do when the market is flat? Yeah, it's actually not flat. See, it's not really flat because uh, it, it, it is a, a question of it's flat if you look at this way. If I'm just zooming out, uh, I'm zooming in. If you look at it like this, it is kind of flat. Okay, if you're just looking at 13 to 22 because it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, it is going up and down. Okay, with a slight downward bias, right? But this is only happening, this view is only happening because I have decided to zoom into only the 13 to 22 period. But actually the market is not flat. If I zoom out once again, if I see, if I see the long term trend, the market is far from flat. It is actually a very strong uptrend. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so, when, so the point that you mentioned is, is a good point. Uh, what is happening here? Some alert has come up. Okay. I don't need this alert. I just close this alert. Okay. I want to close the alert page. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to show you another page. Okay, this one you need to log in. I'm going to give you the URL. Uh, but uh, this this login requires. Uh, this is also a very good charting system. I'm giving it to you. This is the Oanda login. FX Trade Oanda. Uh, you can try to log in here, but this will require a non-India telephone number because Indian, uh, the Indian government does not allow people to open accounts with Oanda. So Oanda does not allow you to set up these um, uh, these uh, uh, dummy accounts. These are paper trading accounts. They don't allow you to set it up if you are from India. So you won't see an India option. So you can, but this is a very good so uh, very good web charts. Uh, if you have some cousin or somebody who lives in London or Dubai or somewhere, just take any non-India number. Anybody living, even Bangladesh is okay. Uh, you can use that number. You can set up, uh, use that telephone number while reg uh, registering and you can set up an account. This is very good because it helps you to look at charts from this perspective. Okay, one minute. So, uh, yeah. So, so the point I was trying to illustrate uh, the, in response to the question that the market is flat well whether it's flat or going up or going down that is a function really of what time period you're looking at okay uh, in this case uh, it if you the moment i increase my time period to start looking at it from 2017 onwards i see that it's a strong uptrend it's uh, but if i look only from 13 july it looks like it's flat okay so that's where you have to take the view 
so so therefore the first thing you have to understand is that to, when you say the market is flat or the market has been going up or the market has been going down these statements are only meaningful if you also clarify which period you're talking about is this is an important point actually that uh, If anybody does not follow, if the mark discussion is anything technical, I use a term you don't understand, you have to uh, quickly ask me, okay? Market is, because I'm trying to give you a heads up for the, is this clear? Have you understood what I've said here? That when you make these kind of statements, well, the answer depends on uh, which time period are you talking about, right? Because I'll give you one more example. Uh, this is a chart of the euro. This is why I prefer this. Uh, uh, this is a very good, this comes from the Oanda platform. Now, look at this euro chart, okay? This is, every window has the same market it's all euro versus us dollar all the all the charts are euro versus us dollar but they all look different why because they are uh, for different time periods okay this one if you see this one the last one bottom right that starts from 27 july to today the ending period and all the charts is today live these are all live charts the right hand side ending period for all the charts is today but the left hand side is not the same for the different charts okay here bottom right the starting period sorry the starting period is uh, 27 july so when you see from 27 july what does it look like the euro is falling down or going up here here is falling down right uh, this part only this part looks like only falling it, it looks like a downtrend or uh, maybe flat or it's a downtrend is that clear you agree? Yes, sir. It is a downtrend. Yeah, yeah. It's a downtrend. Uh, a downward bias at least in, from 27 July to today. But if I now look at this one from 30th June to today, okay, notice the last value is the same in all the charts, okay? If I look from thir thir from 30th June to today, is it a down will anyone call this a downtrend, this one? No, sir. No. Here it's an uptrend, right? So you understood this is a very important principle because you will find many uh, market participants, so-called experts, etc., talk on TV and things like that, and they don't mention this point. Whenever you say market is up or down or flat, you have to also mention which time period are you talking about. Is this point clear to everyone? This is an important point, actually. Has everybody understood this point? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. So you have to be careful about this. So I'm getting you into the habit of what you have to do as a finance professional, no matter where you go, equity trading or, uh, you know, foreign exchange trading or uh, corporate treasury risk management in interest rates. Everywhere you will have the same decision problems. You will be have, you will have to take a view and things are never going to be clear. Okay. So finance is not like uh, physics. In physics, uh, or aeronautics, you design a Mars rover. If your technical specifications are correct, unless something goes wrong, like our Vikram lander, something, it's not that the science has failed, something must have gone wrong, they must not have understood certain part. So, but the science is perfect. Once you design a perfect, uh, you know, machine, it will always uh, succeed. That's why you see so many airplanes are flying every day, not very few crashes, because the science has been perfected, okay? The only time it crashes is when there's some faulty part or faulty software. That's not a failure of the science. But the difference is in finance and economics uh, is the science is not at all perfect. It's very far from perfect. Okay, uh, it is almost useless actually. So uh, therefore, you have to. But that does not mean that you cannot do anything. Okay, so finance and economics, you have to think of it as life. It's, it's like life, like when we go through our life. Does anybody know what is going to happen to them after six months? or three months, or even six weeks, nobody knows, right? Anybody's life, no matter how rich you are, okay, even Mukesh Ambani doesn't know what's going to happen. Something might happen. We don't want to say bad things. But what the point is that no matter how rich you are, nobody knows what is going to happen to you after three weeks, six weeks, whatever. So life is totally unpredictable, actually. But that does not mean that we stop living our life. 
we still make plans, we still take decisions, assuming that by we make some assumptions that we will be alive or you know we will have uh, opportunity to go to this country or that country and we make plans, right? So this is exactly, you have to understand that financial markets are just like life. Uh, it's basically not predictable, but you can make some educated guesses and you can make some assumptions and you can proceed on the basis of the assumptions and then if the assumptions goes, goes wrong, the assumptions go wrong, then you have to unwind your decision. Okay. So if I join uh, LNB, sir, join, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sir, I have a question like, uh, while buying a stock, we have to see the chart quarterly, monthly or uh, weekly, sir, like you, uh, on that side, we have seen the chart in different phases like uh, from uh, from one month to one year to 10 years and sir it was showing a different trend line so sir uh, which chart we choose to buy the stock okay sir if uh, we see the recent it was uh, showing down trend as you said that yeah 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 okay uh, who is speaking now actually who is this uh, sir Vipul. Vipul. okay Oh, I, I didn't really, I thought it was Vipul actually, I reckon, well, I thought you did not enter, I thought you were not, uh, uh, you didn't take finance. Okay, anyway, I, 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 okay, I made a mistake. Okay, all right, okay, I understood. Okay, so very good question actually. So, uh, if, so what he's asking is, which one should we look at? So the answer is you have to look at as much data as possible. Okay, as much data, basically you have to look at as much data as possible. So if you see in your uh, Euro uh, account, now, for the U.S. equities that I will give you, you will not get this kind of a view, okay? Uh, but I'm giving you this kind of a view to show you what is the right way to look at it. The reason you will not get it is that we don't have software which gives this kind of view for U.S. equities. But I'm going, showing you the principle, okay? You keep it in mind, you remember it for the future. This is the right way to look at it. And then I'll show you the workaround for Amazon. So the right way to look at it is that as much data as possible, because you have to look at, uh, these are all part of the same phenomenon, okay? So you have to take a view on the big picture and you have to take a view on the smaller picture also, okay? So here, I've, what I've done in this chart is, uh, I have started, this one you see, I'm going from left to right and then top to bottom and then left to right again. So you see how this is organized, this is the right way to look at any market. Now, in practice, you may not get the uh, software for the particular markets that you're tracking. As in this example, right now we are interested in tracking US equities uh, and we are not going to get this kind of, at least I'm not aware of any software which gives you this kind of view for US equities, okay? Because here simultaneously I'm trying to see the different uh, time frames, but we'll give you the, the ideal way of looking at it and then I'll show you the workaround for US equities. So answer to Whipple's question, you have to look at all the data. So here, when I look at the euro, I see the data from actually, uh, so the euro started in 1999, but here my data is around from 2003 onwards, okay? So I can see this kind of a situation in the euro, and then I start zooming in, okay? I zoom into this part of the movement, and that is shown over here, okay? I see this here. And then I zoom in further to this part of the movement, which you can see is being shown over here. So this one, this is a monthly chart, Okay, this is from 2003, this is from 2013, this is from 2018, all right? And what I'm doing is, and as I move to the right, I am basically zooming into the last part of the previous chart, okay? It's an important thing to understand how to, dis how to set up the charts in an ideal situation, assuming you can have data in this format for anything that you want, okay? Which eventually you should be able to get if you pay money for it but we are working with free charts. So, but it's important you understand the principle here, what is going on, because the principle will not change, whether it is Euro versus USD, it's crude oil, whether it's US equities or Indian equities or Indian bonds, nothing will change. No principle will change. The principles are the same for all the markets. Okay, the analytical principles are the same. So, uh, right, so we are zooming into the last part here. I zoom in here, <coughs> one second. Okay, I zoom into the last part here and here you can see the detail over here. And once again, I zoom into this part here, you can see it here. Then I zoom into this part here, you can see it here. This is a 
monthly, this is a, a weekly, this is a daily chart, this is an 8 hour chart, this starts from 2019, December 19th, they said 2020, this is a, I uh, have made it I think 4 hours, yeah, this is a 4 hour chart, this is a 1 hour chart, 60 minutes, this is 15 minute chart and this is a 5 minute chart, okay, so this is how it's organized and <clears throat> each time I'm zooming in to this part here and from the 8 hour I go to 4 hours, then this I'm zooming into this part here. Only this part is shown in a blow up fashion. It's blown up here. And then I can see greater detail. I look at this last part here. I follow this here over here. And then you can see here the last one, the five minute which I showed you first. What is this? This is actually the zoom in of this one. Did everybody follow what I was just doing? You follow the thinking behind it? Is everyone following? Yes, sir. The, yeah, thinking behind it. Okay, please make sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, make sir. sure you understand what I'm. Yes, doing. sir. So, so what I'm yes, showing sir. you here is the ideal way of setting up the charts for any market, assuming there are no constraints. You have all the money you have want. You all the money you need. You can buy any kind of data you want. If you had that situation, this is how you should set up the chart for any market. Okay, but in practice, you may not have this, and this is how it shows you what what is going on. Because what will happen essentially is that uh, uh, we have to get into, we have to anticipate a lot of other ideas uh, like stop loss, etc. Does everybody understand stop loss? Anybody here who does not understand stop loss? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone understands? Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, awesome. we have to just make sure. Please also, once again, let me repeat that, uh, that please do not feel shy, okay? These are your batch mates. Uh, and do not do not worry. I've already told you once before uh, in lab that. Uh, sir, okay, sir. About it. Yes, such another question. Yes. Uh, sir, I am asking about the chart. Uh, can you please open the chart again? The last one. one, minute, uh, one yeah. Chart. You. The euro, right? This one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you are, sir. Tell me, tell me. Yes, sir. So you said that uh, this chart is not available in uh, any other country or US market. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I was saying that that is available for US market. You are able to get this kind of chart? Uh, this kind of net, but uh, similar to that. Uh, we need to just uh, use our figure or just not this type, but uh, similar to this. Okay, in the sense, so which you are, then that's good, I can learn from, uh, which which URL is that, which uh, software is that? Which website or software is giving you this kind of uh, chart view for US stocks? Yes? Such Sir, Apple, are you using Apple stock? It is available on Apple stock. On Apple stock. Okay, so I don't yes. use Apple, but... We need to put a finger, finger on that, uh, for example, we need to... Uh, she, uh, if okay, your voice is cracking up a little, but that's okay. We got the point. So yeah, if it's available, that's fine. You can just send me the URL, and I can try if I if I can access it through the website uh, through the web. But that's fine. So if you have that data for U.S. equities, and excellent, I'm just showing you some general principles. Okay, I'm just showing you in general answering Vipul's question. We are still answering Vipul's question which is which time frame basically what Vipul was asking was which time frame should we look at because I told you guys that your view of whether the market has been going up or going down or staying flat is a function of which time frame period are you looking at and so he said now which time period should we look at so the answer to that question is you have to look at all the time periods okay and uh, the reason we have to look at that, and I'll explain to you, I'll just give you one approach to trading because many of you are new to it. So uh, before you evolve your own style, okay, the ultimate long-term goal is that you should all evolve your own style. You don't have to do it like me. But I will give you my approach so that uh, until you figure out your own approach, you can use my approach because it is a uh, you know complete approach in the sense it's internally consistent and it will not, not get you into trouble. In the sense, you may lose money, but you will not lose more than your budgeted amount. So, I'm giving you my so so answer to my previous question is, uh, so Sachin, uh, you're okay. You are just giving us the information, right? 
So uh, yes, that's fine. Okay, good. If you can get it, then excellent. No problem. Okay. Uh, so uh, the question that I was asking, which I think everybody answered correct, uh, that they have, uh, they know what a stop loss is. Okay. So I've just. No, I don't. Know. Yeah, yeah, good. So let me explain to you what a stop loss is. Okay. So a stop loss is basically a point. This is actually a loose terminology. Later on, when we see uh, market orders, we'll see. Uh, when we talk about order types, we will see that this is basically a. The technical term is actually only stop. So we are discussing this point. So let me discuss this. Let me write it down. Okay. We are talking about stop loss. Okay. Stop loss is actually kind of loose uh, jargon. So the technical term is actually stop. Stop order. So instead of stop loss order, it actually the, the system logic is always a stop order. Right. So, for instance, when you go into your, um, if I want to place, let's say, on crude oil, okay, if I want to place a sell stop, uh, right, yeah. So I'm trying to sell, so I've click, clicked on the bid. Now, if you see, this is the order type, okay, this is the order type. When I click on this, no, I don't need iBalco. Yeah. You will see that when it shows you the order types, it shows you stop. This STP is uh, for stop, okay, and stop at stop limit, etc. So it does not show you stop loss, okay. So the thing you have to understand when we are using this terminology is uh, I'll just delete this, okay. That the uh, technical you should be aware of this straight away that we are talking about this order called stop loss, okay. Stop loss is actually a kind of layman's language which we use. Uh, but the technical term in the system logic is going to be stop order. The system never understands anything called stop loss. It understands stop. Okay. But having said that, let us explain what stop loss is. What is stop loss? Stop loss essentially is this. Now suppose um, we go to, okay, let me go back to this. Let me stay with the euro. Okay. Now this is the euro again. Uh, let me go back to Amazon actually because it will be easier to understand stocks. Uh, so let me do it this way. This, uh, suppose I go, uh, I'm very bullish on Amazon. Okay, I think Amazon is going to go up. Okay, this is, let's go for 60. So I would like to buy it. Okay, I would like to buy it. And let's assume that I buy it right away. For the sake of simplicity, let, let's assume that I buy it right away. Okay, so the price right now is around 3000. Okay, so let's assume I buy uh, Amazon at 3000. Okay, now what happens if the price starts, if, now two things can happen after I bought it at 3000. Either it goes up or it goes down. I mean, it can stay there also, but it doesn't stay like that for very long. So eventually it will either go up or it will go down. Two things can happen. So if it goes up, then I'm happy. I'm making money because I bought it and I bought it at 3000. If it goes up to 3400, then I'm making $400 per stock per share. So I'm very happy. Okay. So not too much to uh, less, less problems when it goes up. Okay. Fewer things to worry about. But if it starts falling, what do I do then? Suppose I bought it at 3000 and then falls to 2800. Now I'm losing $200 per night. It falls to 2600 and then I'm losing $400 per share. Now it keeps on falling. So at some point you understand that at some point, if I'm, unless I'm crazy at some point I have to, take a decision that okay whatever I did this is not working out I better get out of this thing because I'm losing too much money is that is that clear to everyone most people most reasonable people at some point will say okay this I this thing is not working out let me get out of it is, is that clear to everybody right so the stop yeah so the stop loss is just that level okay that level where you decide and ideally the stop loss should be decided before you enter the position okay so before you enter the position, you figure out a point. Maybe I say this point here, say 2,250, okay, 2,250. So this is a very wide stop, but I'm just giving an example to show the logic, to think, show you the thinking behind the stop loss, okay. So that before you take a position, okay, when you take a position, um, only two things can happen. Either it goes in your favor or it goes against you. So the stop loss question arises only when it goes against you. So before you take the position, you assume, you imagine, uh, okay, what happens if it goes against me? At what point am I going to say, I can't take, take this anymore. Okay. Let me just get out of this thing. Okay. Ab, as we would say in Hindi, ab bas karo. Okay. 
so you just let it go and you give up on this position okay so um, is this clear to everyone so this is the stop loss is the level so in this case if i were to decide like this that i am buying it at 3000 but i know from before that it could also go against me there's no guarantee of profit so i decide from before i enter the position before i buy the stock i take a i do some analysis and i decide on a particular level 2250 is going to be my stop loss which means that if the market goes below 2250 i will sell out my position i'll close my position and go to zero position and i will book my losses which means okay so i will uh, crystallize my losses i will realize my losses from 2250 to 3000 okay so 750 dollars per share i will take a loss and this way i will ensure that i do not lose any more money is this clear to everyone the concept of stop loss uh, sir? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Question? Yeah. What is the question? Yeah, sir. Uh, like in the Indian market, if we uh, see the news channel like CNBC awards and all, and sir, they give some uh, information about the stock, like the target, current market price, and the stock loss. Yeah. So, sir, on what basis they calculate the stock loss? So, uh, uh, like uh, for the long term, the stock loss is of no use. No, no. If I'm we sorry. are uh, in investing for. No, no, I would not say that the stop loss is of no use. Uh, so, you have made two statements there. One is a question and the other is a statement. You said that for the. Uh, yes. On what basis do they calculate the stop? Okay, I can try to answer that question. The second thing you said is that uh, for the long term, the stock is stop loss is no use. That statement is not correct, actually, because uh, you can have huge losses. So I'll show you, for instance, let's look at the U.S. equity market. All right. Uh, if we look at U.S. equities and if you look at, let's say, 240. All right. So you can see, uh, even if you see five years, when these losses happen, okay, essentially, when you see this sharp drop, this is your COVID-19 uh, panic selling. All right. So look at what happens. So you see, in 2016, so November of 2016, Trump wins the election, okay? And you see that there is a dramatic rally. And this is, if you go all the way back, yeah. So November of 2016 onwards, okay, you can see what a dramatic rally there was in the U.S. stock market. There was a gap here with the Fed tightening too much. And uh, this kind of a drop because of the COVID-19 panic, it almost wiped out the entire gains of the Trump presidency on the, uh, on the, in the case of the S&P 500. Okay. Are you able to see this dramatic movement? If I show you a little bit more here. Okay. You can see, see how big this drop is. So, you know, when you say long-term yes, investor, long-term investor, many of the long-term investors, if you notice the market commentary at this point of time, many of the market investors were very, uh, scared everybody was in panic they thought the world is coming to an end okay and so therefore they were all saying no no don't buy right now and you know like whatever you have uh, maybe don't sell it but it was basically very confused people were very confused they were very anxious so the point I'm trying to illustrate in response to where I'm disagreeing slightly with what Vipul is saying that in the long term stock list because the point is that you can have some very very dramatic moves in the markets okay very massive, huge uh, declines, okay? So at that point, if you say that I'm a long-term investor and I'm not going to sell it, okay? Uh, that may not be a very good approach because who knows where it's going? I mean, in this case, it has gone back up. But if you look at the India market, okay? It's not gone up that much, okay? The call, it is coming up now a little bit, but the response is quite slow compared to the US. Uh, let's say if you look at the technical, uh, the technology stocks etc so who knows what's going to happen so therefore i would caution against this kind of thinking that uh, you know that we have let's look at the technology index in the case of technologies you can in, in the case of tech stocks this is the uh, qqq which is the uh, nasdaq 100 index it's a etf which tracks the nasdaq 100 index you can see that in the case of the nasdaq this is the covid 19 panic selling and in the case of the NASDAQ, has already gone up to historic highs. Okay. 
the Nasdaq is already at historic all-time highs and this COVID-19 panic has been completely wiped out for tech stocks. The Nasdaq 100 index is basically mainly focused on tech stocks. So the point is that in the case of the S&P, it has still not gone to a new high and I'll show you something else. I show you, for instance, the um, uh, Russell 2000, okay, which is uh, a kind of uh, small cap stocks. Okay, in the case of small cap stocks, you can see this is also a major index in the U.S. You can see that from 2018 onwards, it has been coming. It has still not gone up really to a great extent. It's still down overall. Okay, so this idea that for long term stock not stop loss is not relevant is not correct. Okay. The stop loss logic is relevant for all time frames, no matter which time frame you are using or investing in. Okay, so please make sure that I want to write this down. It's an important point, actually, that So this will all not look very pretty, but it's meant for our understanding. To plan to limit losses, how do you limit losses? Everyone understand this language I'm using, limiting losses, okay? When I bought, I bought something, I bought Amazon at 3000, okay? I bought it at 3000 and um, I bought it at 3000 and I take a plan to go out uh, to exit my position my stop loss is at 2250 so that I don't have to lose more than $750 per share so that placing the stop loss over here allows me to limit my losses everybody understands this language okay how do you limit losses you limit losses by a stop loss order or stop order okay is relevant uh, no matter what your investing time frame okay it's a very important lesson okay so uh, let's uh, actually it's investing so I will just use all right okay is, is this statement clear to everybody what I'm saying here you may not agree with it maybe Vipul will, Vipul will not agree with it right now but uh, at least you should understand what I'm saying have you understood what I'm saying here? Mm, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so basically, yes, sir. depend on the type of investor. Depends Maybe. on the type of? Type of investor, sir. What type of investor he is. If exactly. he is a risk averse, then he may apply the stop loss. Yeah, no. But I would recommend that for your survival, if for your survival, you should always apply the stop loss because you can have some very massive moves, okay? Let's look at the Japanese equity index. Let's see how much data they have on the Japanese equity index. Okay, uh, maybe they don't have it as N225. Let's look at Nikkei. Uh, okay, let's look at this Nikkei 225. You guys are all familiar that the Nikkei is the Japanese index? Nikkei 225, are you guys familiar with this? You need to develop a global mindset, okay? Awesome. Yeah, you need to develop a global mindset. You need to be looking at, if you go to my uh, YouTube, the miscellaneous lectures page, there is a, I'll, I'll show you that, uh, I'll show you the videos. You need to start tracking global markets also. This Indian market mindset, see India is a backwater when it comes to global finance. So uh, you cannot study, you can study marketing from an India perspective because marketing is very local specific, you know, context specific. But you cannot study finance from an India perspective. Finance has to be studied from a global perspective because our markets are backward. They are, we don't have a convertible currency. If you study finance from an India perspective, your knowledge of finance will be very limited. Finance has to be studied with a focus on US markets. You will also have to look at India markets because you are going to be in India, most of you. But so therefore you must understand the local market, but you cannot learn your principles of finance based on India mar Indian markets. It has to be based on US markets, the most developed markets in the world, okay? So please understand that. Please make it a habit to track global markets, what's going on. Let's look at the Nikkei, yeah. Now, let's go back, let's understand Vipul's question once again. And let me show you, this is an important chart to keep in mind. This, so first learning for you is Nikkei 225 index, 
this is like the sensex of the Japanese okay this is like the Japan uh, uh, sensex or nifty 50 this is the most prominent equity index in Japan Nikkei 225 so you learn this okay now let's look at now is Japan a banana republic country would you say Japan is like some uh, you know small country in Africa or something like that no Japan no is sir country, yeah one of the most technologically sophisticated countries in the world used to be the second largest economy I personally still think it's the second largest economy but a very very technologically sophisticated country okay so uh, a clearly a developed country now look what happens to a country like that okay so when Vipul is saying for long-term investors so Vipul is a long-term investor he goes into Japan and buys Japanese equities in January of 2019, uh, 2000, uh, of 1990, okay. So, Vipul buys Japanese equities in January of uh, 1990, okay. Then, in uh, December of 2008, he meets uh, Utsav. And Utsav says, Vipul Bhaiya, how is your Japanese equity invested do investment doing? So, from 1990 to 2008, Vipul Bhaiya has lost all this money, but he is telling Utsav, but bhai, I am a long-term investor. So how do you like this uh, performance from 1990 to 2008? Is it a very short period? No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. So, Long period. Yeah. So when people say to you, you know, this, you'll find this kind of uh, statement in the Indian markets and even in the uh, foreign markets, you'll see many people saying these kind of things that, oh, I'm a long-term investor, okay? And in the long-term, equity markets always go up. Whenever they say that, no, you should open this trading view chart, open the Nikkei index, and show them that in a developed country like Japan, major, major economy of the world, from 1990 to 2008, okay, you can calculate the loss, how much money Vipul has lost in Japanese equities over this period, okay? So you're looking at about 18-year period, where the market has basically gone down so much okay so therefore never forget this chart when anybody tells you that uh, oh, yeah, equity markets go up always go up in the long term you know when the market is down 30 percent 40 percent then mutual fund managers might tell you that no no you keep investing for the long term don't forget the lesson of the of this chart okay there is no guarantee that anything will go up in the long term and what is long term I mean, 18 years is long term for most people, okay? So never forget this chart. Always remember that there is no guarantee of anything. Anything can happen, okay? So who would have thought that you would have had this kind of a dramatic move in the S&P 500 in the, in the, in the case of, uh, you know, the COVID-19 uh, sell-off? Look at this sell-off. It was, it was such a panic, a wave of panic selling, okay? Everybody was so scared. Everybody thought the world is coming to an end. Okay, and so you never know what's going to happen. So never have that kind of. So the question that Vipul asked, and the uh, the point that he also made, which is the long term. So this is a very important thing to understand, that uh, this always have a plan to limit losses. This is actually, uh, you know, if you want to talk about long term survival in the markets, let me put this in high highlight. The most important approach, the most important uh, aspect of trading is that you must have a plan to limit losses otherwise whether you're doing it for yourself or for your company many companies have gone bankrupt because they did not have many many companies have gone bankrupt because they did not have a plan to limit losses if you these are the four most important words in investing plan to limit losses okay and when i say plan actually i should say pre-plan now this is not very elegant english but you understand what it what it means why pre-plan? Pre-plan means I don't think about this after my st after I start losing money. Even before I buy Amazon, I think about it. That is the whole point. Okay, before I buy Amazon, I think about it. Okay, so I look at this. I say, okay, it looks great. I think it's going to go up. Okay, but what if it doesn't go up? I do all this analysis before I enter. Okay, I say, okay, I'm going to buy it at three thousand, but I have a plan to limit my losses. If it goes below 2,250, I am going to get out and I will not lose more than $750 a share on this trade. Do you understand this logic? Do you understand this thinking? 
Okay, this is one of the most important lessons yes, in investing. Okay, so this is very important, and it is important no matter what your investing time frame, because as we have seen, Vipul lost so much money. Uh, I hope you're not offended, Vipul. I'm just making fun of you. I'm just, uh, you know, <laughs> so I'm just putting you into the Japanese equity market and making you an investor in 1990. And uh, so, so I may do this with uh, with various people. So please don't be offended. Okay, so therefore, it is a pre plan to limit losses. The English is not very elegant here, but you understand what I mean by pre plan. Okay, what happens with most investors, which uh, happened in your, um, we had some discussions with some of your seniors also, they bought some shares at PNB, and then what happened? They started losing money, and then they're coming, they come, they, co they came and asked me, sir, we are losing money, what should we do? So, this is what happens with most people that first they buy without any pre-plan to limit losses. First they buy and then they start losing money and then they want, then they think, okay, what should we do now? Okay, that is not a good approach, okay? So you must have the pre-plan to limit losses before you enter the position, okay? Now, how you decide on this, we'll come to later. Uh, so uh, this is the point. So the first question that I'm going back to Whipple's question, how should we look at it, okay, which is, uh, we should look at all this as much data as possible, okay? And then how I'm just going to quickly show you how I do this. Uh, so, so one possible approach that you understand the need for a stop loss, okay? So what we're going to do is I'll show it to you with uh, in the case of the euro itself, and then you can apply the same logic. Remember, all the charts are the same, whether it's euro, whether it's crude oil, whether it's uh, uh, you know, pepper futures or whether it is uh, Amazon or Facebook or Infosys, the logic is all the same. We don't really care what it is. We just want to look at how do we look at the charts, okay? What is the logic we use? So, in this case of the euro, okay, uh, I would like to look at, uh, for any market, I would like to look at all the charts. I look at this big picture view, okay? The idea is that I form a view based on the big picture, okay? You understand what big picture is? Big picture means lots of data lots of history and this is kind of like small picture we don't really say small picture but it's in contrast to big picture this is very little limited period of data big picture means big lots of period uh, long period of data i look at this data okay and i form a view let's say i form a view that the euro is actually uh, this entire decline over here is over and now the euro is going to react to this decline so it's going to go up to say around 1.4 i just form a view these are the kind of assumptions you have to make okay why do i make a booking let's say i make a booking on some timeshare holiday resort for next year's uh, summer holiday okay uh, that means obviously i'm paying money in, in advance for booking a timeshare holiday next summer that means obviously i believe that i will be alive next year if I'm not going to be alive, uh, then why should I make the booking? So we make assumptions like this and then based on that, we take decisions. Okay, so here I'm making an assumption that it's going to go to 1.4. And so obviously I want to be a buyer. Okay, now, but as you know, if you're going to be a buyer, you also have to set a stop. Okay, you always have to set a stop loss, whether you're a buyer or a seller, okay, to limit your losses. So if I'm buying here, what I'm so I form, I look at this chart, long term chart, and I form a view that is going to 1.4. How I form that view? That's a long answer to that question. We won't go into that right now. But you can just uh, use your uh, instinct. Okay, you can just look at it like a surfer. Okay, look at it as if you're surfing the waves. You just form an arbitrary. Uh, you just use your gut feel. Okay, what does it feel like? <clears throat> so if I if it's going to go up, I'm going to be a buyer. If I'm going to be a buyer, I have to place a stop. Now, where will I place a stop? Now, that's where I need the short-term charts, okay? Now, if I place a stop over here, this is around uh, 105, 80 or something, that's too much. Because the market is now 1.17, 105, that's too much. So, I don't want to place a stop here. So, what I do is, I keep, I've already formed my view that I'm bullish on the euro. Now, my concern is, where do I put the stop, okay? So that's why I need the short term charts. I move from the monthly to the weekly. I can't see that much detail. I'm concerned about this part really. I will put my stop somewhere between here and here, somewhere in between, okay? Uh, this is the widest stop that I will consider. But this is also too wide for me, okay? So therefore I start zooming in, okay? Remember the zooming in, I start zooming in, okay? I'm zooming in here 
I see this is still not very clear, so I need to zoom in further. I use shorter term charts. Weekly not good enough, let's go to daily. Now I can see a little more detail. Now you see the difference. This one is around 106, okay? This level, this point is the same as uh, this point, as the same as this point. Is everyone following what I'm saying? Are you guys all following what I'm saying? If you get lost in, in and so, so the logic is, they basically, I, I'm bullish on the euro, so I'm going to be a buyer, okay? That part is clear. I form a bullish view. How I form the view, that we'll get into later. But I become bullish, I look at the chart, I become bullish, I want to be buying euros. But if I'm buying, I have to place a stop loss somewhere which will limit my losses. Now, I could, usually we select the previous highs and lows. So I could select this low, okay? But when I look at this low, what is the level? The current market is 1.17 and this level is 1.06. That's too much. I don't want to lose so much money, okay? So I try to look for a low. Remember here I'm buying, so I'll be selling. When I do the stop loss, I'll be selling. So therefore, I look for a level higher than this. I look for a low, okay, which is higher than this. This is too much. 106 to 1.1, I don't want to lose so much money. So I see another low. By zooming in, constantly zooming in, okay, uh, through shorter term charts, I see a level here. Now, what about this? This looks interesting. What about this low? Okay, I zoom in further. Look at this low. What is the level of this low? 1.12, let's say. 1.12. Now, do you see the basic difference that uh, we are approaching the closing, but we will uh, just continue. We still have five minutes, but we will continue the discussion. Are you guys following so far what I'm doing? I form a view on the euro and bullish. I'm yes, sir. 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 Okay, great, great, great. Excellent. Excellent to see that so, uh, so many people are so uh, engaged. Okay, good. So I'm going to be a buyer. Now, if I'm going to be a buyer, we already have our principle, most important principle in investing, pre-plan to limit losses, okay? Which means I have to uh, think and assuming that I always buy at market. Market is 1.17, okay? So I could be using, uh, so if I'm going to be buying here, my stop loss will be a sell, okay? Understand that also, that the stop loss is always the opposite of the initial trade. The initial trade is a buy and the role of the stop loss is to get me out of my position. So initially if I have bought, now I have to sell in the stop loss, right? The stop loss will always be the opposite of the initial sell, okay? So I'm going to be buying euros, so my stop loss will have to be a sell and usually when I sell in my approach, I would be selling just below a low, a well-defined low defined by the market, okay? So uh, therefore I select, I'm looking for lows. I see one low over here that's too far away, 106. I don't want to lose 1.17 minus 1.06. That's too much. So I look for a low which is a little closer to the current market. I can't see it on these charts, not enough zooming in. I see, I zoom in more now, I can see more detail. I can see this one. This one looks a little better, 111, 112. Now you see 1.17 minus 112, that is a much lower loss than 1.17 minus 106. Is that clear? You see what I'm getting at, right? Yes. Okay. So now I've got a slightly better uh, site improvement. Okay, 1.17 minus 102, uh, 112. That's still a little bit better, but I could make it even better. In fact, I was actually uh, looking at this. And so, in fact, you can even, uh, I would zoom in even more. I don't want to lose even 1.12. Now I need shorter and shorter term charts. This is an eight hour chart, not good enough for me, okay? I want to go to four hours. Even this is too far away, 1.17 to 1.12. I want to go zoom in further. Can I find a s even s smaller low? I mean, a low which is even nearer to the current market. I zoom in can't see much more detail. Zoom in more, can't see much more detail. Zoom in more, now I can see. On the 15 minute chart, I see another low over here. Can you see that? This low here, 1.1680 or something like that, okay? Now this looks really good because 1.175, 1.1680, really close. You, this is also a low. So I might even place my stop over here. I might place it here, I might place it here, I might place it here. So. This is a, again, there's no clear cut logic here because basically uh, there, there's no clear cut, there's no uh, best answer, unlike science, okay? There is always a trade-off involved. But the point here I'm trying to make is 
uh, answering uh, Vipo's original question, which chart should we look at? We should look at all the time frames. And generally what we do is we look at the long term time frame to form the view. And then we look at the short term time frame to set the stop. Okay. That is basically the way it operates. Let me quickly show you. We just have about one minute left. Let me just quickly show you what how it works in Amazon. So that you guys, once I send you the start list, you already start setting up your tickers at GWS and you already start um, you know, monitoring the stocks. Basically, I want you to start monitoring the stocks, which means monitoring means now let's say Amazon is one of the stocks. Now you start tracking everything about Amazon, earnings report, any news report, any kind of uh, investigation by the government, everything, everything that comes up and then start monitoring the market price movement, start monitoring the chart, how is it going, okay? And start forming views. Okay, so what am I going to do in Amazon? Let me quickly show you the application of this logic in since I don't have such in uh, software where I can see all this for US equities, one view. Okay, uh, but you can see what I did in the euro here. I formed this view. Okay, and actually I did this in the sense I didn't have time to actually do this, but I, I thought was looking at it this way that uh, I'm bullish and I put the stop over here. You go along at market and put the stop over here, okay, which is 160. And so that's basically how it works. And so quickly apply this to Amazon. How does it work? I look at the long-term data. Okay, this is, looks very bullish. Look at five years. Okay, I zoom in a little bit more. Okay, uh, on the same chart because I don't have that access. Okay, now I see that it's going here. So I could potentially put my stop here. Okay, 116.35, uh, 1635. Buy at 3000 for 1635, but that's too far away. I want to come in a little bit closer. Okay, and then I do this uh, 240, which is a four hour chart, which is this point. Okay, this gives me a little more detail, 16, 1600 roughly. This is one option, not, not good enough for me, that's too far away. Therefore, what I do is I go with a 50, uh, with uh, maybe a 60 minute chart. Okay, and I go here, this is 1600, that's too far away. I don't want to buy at 3000 and set out and stop loss at 1600. Therefore, I select a higher level, which is 2250. I can select even higher. I can even say that this point is it. The market low, if I go zoom in a little bit more, I can buy it at 3000. I can even say that this low, which has been formed, that's the end of the correction. It's a little aggressive in terms of view taking, but I'm just showing you what is possible, okay? Or you could even say that you take a 30 minute chart, okay? And you say, your option was here actually. 1600 was one option, too far away. I don't want to lose that much money. 2250 was one option, still too far away. I don't want to lose so much money. Now I can put another low over here. See, there's another low over here. This point I'm talking about. Okay, there's another low over here. 26, 2630, let's say. Now that's a lot, that's much better. 3000 to 2630. Okay, 70, uh, well, 200, 370 dollars uh, uh, per share. Still a lot, actually. Okay. But uh, I could also put it here, but this is more logically correct than this one. Okay. Now you understood what uh, we are about two minutes over, but you guys understood what is going on here. Uh, you understood how I'm approaching it. Oh, yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so, so yes, I will sir. send you. So please, uh, Jakar, yes, sir. Yeah. Jakar and uh, yes, sir. Priya, please send me your logins, complete your registration, and I will send you the list of stocks. Set up your logins, set up your software. And get ready. I'll send you the list of stocks. Start tracking, and then we will continue in the next session. We will start getting yes, into your project brief. This is okay. going to be your project brief. You will be buying and selling, and all individuals. Okay, this okay. time, this is the first batch in which it is all individual because uh, in the previous batches, people are a lot of people are not doing work. So now everybody has to do it. Otherwise, you will not get grades. Everybody is going to trade. So there will be 20, uh, 37 uh, individual portfolio results. Any questions? Any, everybody else can leave. Uh, those who have, uh, you know, classes over, classes finished, uh, you can leave. Uh, but anybody who wants to ask any question, you can ask. Sir, I just wanted to tell you one thing that uh, I just logged into my trading account and I noticed that I sent you the wrong password back then. So I will just uh, send you the correct password now. Okay, okay, do that, do that. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, Rishabh has a question. 
Sir, I uh, I'm Rishabh Agarwal only. I wanted to just tell you this. Okay, this is okay. This is what you were saying. Okay, okay, good, fine. Okay. So normally, yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. So yeah, you guys are class is dismissed. So anybody else has a question? You can ask. Anybody? Any question? Should be. Uh, sir, you have sent a message. Uh, like we received a message like in which market we have to invest. No, that uh, I sent. Either you. international. Yeah, I have not sent it to you yet. I will send you the universe of stocks. Okay. I will send you the universe of stocks. That I will send you very soon. Uh, Shorya has a question. Shorya's hand is raised, or he wants to join the Congress party. Yes, sir, uh, ma I am also facing the same issue because I tried the ID password thing, yeah. and uh, it was yeah, and yeah, it was not uh, not working. So I applied for like forgot password, and it said that it would send an email, but uh, I've still not received the email. One minute, one minute. Let me check your record here. Um, yeah, I never tested your email. Okay, now okay. Try to avoid having these problems because this. Okay, you must have not correct no, correctly noted your password or something. So you have not received your password after the reset password approach. Okay, uh, try to see if you can write. There's a help desk. Try to see if there's a help desk option. Uh, there is a help desk option. Try to write on that and see because it will be difficult for me to follow up for individual students. I'll have too much admin work that way. Then uh, try to write to them and see what happens. That uh, you explain your problem and uh, and just write to them and see what they say. If you have a help desk option, or just write to IB Student Trading Lab. You have the email where you got. I, I, IB Student Interactive Brokers Training Lab. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The guys who the initially sent you the invite. Uh, yes, sir. Unless that's a no, no. Unless that's a no reply email, you can write to them. Okay, sir. Let's see if you can solve it. If you can't solve it, then I'll try to write to the broker. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah. Oops. Okay. So yeah. Anybody? Uh, so before your question, uh, I have not yet sent you the list of stocks. I will send it to you. And I just showed it to you today, just now, because uh, I wanted to just make sure that uh, uh, you guys are. Um, yeah. Just to make sure that you know what has to be done. I want to get you guys started on this process. Uh, because uh, everything will depend on uh, your all your learning is basically going to come from uh, most of your learning is going to come from the what you experience when you're trying to take views on stocks and then it doesn't go in your favor okay uh, you do this and it doesn't go in your favor and it uh, then you start losing money and then when do you get out when do you take profits when it starts going in your favor as you struggle with these decisions uh, for each of the stocks this is how you're going to learn, okay? So that's why I want to give you this, I want to give you this template uh, for today. And uh, then as soon as I give you the stocks, uh, as soon as I give you the list of stocks, you can get going. Is this clear, Vipul? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, all right. So yeah, so you guys can, uh, you can leave. Anybody has any other questions? Anybody with whose question has not been answered? Priya and Jakar, please make sure you send me your information, okay? Yes, sir, I have mailed you. Yeah, okay, okay. Fine. Uh, all right, so should we, get, uh, should we end the class here, guys? Everybody, no questions, no more questions? There is some conversation, okay, this is show conversation. Okay, all right, okay, we can end it now. Okay, I'm going to end it, all right, okay? If you have any problems, okay. Uh, please tell everybody any problem I've already told you. Any problem, just email me or call me. We can talk about it. Okay. Uh, connectivity issue. Got logged out. Now logged in. Fine. Okay. No problem. All right. Okay. We are ending this.